of course I was working further on the two tube stereo amplifier and the uh, breadboard was all on it. Uh, it will not only be a breadboard, it will also be the definite circuit. But anyway, uh, this is the say latest phase stage of this uh, tube amplifier. And here I made the back the back side, and you can see that all also this back side is covered with template, glued to multiplex wood, etc. etc. No problems with that. And here you can see that there is the input made of a few kinch sockets here. Uh, and furthermore, everything is as it is, uh, like I showed in earlier videos. Uh, here is the uh, filament voltage and current. And here is the negative grid voltage and current. And well, um, go to the earlier videos where I have told more about this setup. Say the the use of the negative grid, vo grid voltage where it was used for and say preventing hum on the filaments. Anyway, of course I was working further on the plate voltage circuit and this video is only a kind of very simple demo I only want to show that with, say, uh, transformers that are in the range of uh, 50 volts, uh, you can get the good plate voltage by a voltage quadrupler or a voltage tripler. The voltage tripler is in one of my books, but here I want to show the voltage uh, quadrupler so it amplifies in a certain way the voltage say we have here 24 volts open voltage and in the end of the voltage quadrupler we have approximately 143 volts that could be used as a plate voltage that's the most interesting thing of this circuit and in fact it's a very very simple here is the schematic I want to uh, say lift out the lights to give the schematic more say uh, contrast. There are four diodes here. Each diode say adds a part in uh, pushing up the, the the input voltage here, the 24 volts AC to a good DC level four times and of course that's always important to tell I cannot stress that enough the power output wattage stays the same so when this transformer is 3 watts and the voltage is lifted up four times or whatever the current will drop down and at the end we see a surely a 3 watt um, maximum power output and of course there is a kind of loss in this circuit. That was more or less all to tell about the voltage quadrupler. Let's look how it was made. I have to switch on all the lights again. Um, there are many things to tell. At first you see here that 143 uh, DC voltage out that is generated between these two electrodes. This is a positive, this is a negative. But of course, when you say load that circuit with a resistance, uh, the voltage will drop down to a substantial level. I want to demonstrate that when all my 
uh, here is the the resistor of 12k 12000 ohms i now bridge that to the between the positive and the negative of this uh, voltage quadrupler and let's see what happens so you can see directly that the voltage drops down to approximately 100 volts DC completely logical but we have to take in account that in a radio tube especially in a, a triode sorry in a pentode tube there are uh, there, there's a grid between the anode and the cathode and the internal resistance of a, a pentode tube in general for medium power uses is approximately 4000 ohms or 5000 ohms you can surely surely find that in the data sheets uh, when you study tubes and in the earlier videos I was talking about the triode pentode tube the ECL80 and you can surely find say the internal resistance between the anode and the cathode of such a tube anyway this is only that demo so here we say uh, make a kind of ID that the internal resistance between the anode and the cathode of a tube is 12,000 ohms and in that case the voltage will drop and of course the voltage will also vary and drop uh, when a pentode or triode tube is driven on its grid with a signal anyway uh, study more information about uh, radio tubes uh, you can go to the YouTube channel of all American 5 radio Richard McWerser uh, he has many informations and also a free book about how radio tubes work anyway so I take this apart the voltage of of course goes up etc etc and of course that's very important to tell um, it could be that when you use this circuit as a plate voltage and you have here the ideal output say 200 volts 180 volts there could be of course hum hum caused by the main transformer uh, in my situation it's 50 hertz but on other parts uh, in america for instance the main supply is 60 hertz so it could be that you hear that um, when the plate voltage to the tube is not smooth enough uh, the ideal situation is that the plate voltage is as smooth as a battery but of course where to find I don't know a battery say a completely classic battery um, that can deliver 180 volts DC nowadays that's uh, more or less quite strange so we often say supply the tube circuits out of the main supply and that's 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz or whatever so when you get that problem you can of course here connect a bigger smoothing capacitor of course that capacitor has to handle the high voltage that's present here now it is approximately 140 volts so when I wanted to smooth that out much better I needed for instance a thousand microfarad capacitor that could handle say 200 volts DC or so and another issue is that when you t want to transport more and more fierce current into uh, a tube circuit the, into the plate voltage 
these capacitors could be could have a too low val value. Also, in such a case, you can lift up the value of all these four capacitors, say to approximately 470 microfarad. But of course, keep in account that the voltage that they uh, have to handle must be very, very high. Otherwise, you get, uh, say, problems. Uh, the capacitors heat up. They can even explode in a more or less critical, critical situation anyway. There's a reason why in this circuit I first have tried 22 microfarad 400 volt capacitors. So let's go to the circuit in real. In reality, you can see here the capacitors that I've used. 400 volt, 22 microfarad. All these four capacitors are uh, 22 microfarad at 400 volts. The transformer is a kind of, say, wall transformer, and it's tiny. And to be honest, is it's a bad transformer because because of the say the the core here. I will. Uh, be more or less sure when I mount this transformer here, the plate transformer, the transformer that has to give the plate voltage here inside this tube amplifier, it will stray so much uh, AC hum out uh, that you can hear it uh, when audio sounds are amplified. Because of the big electromagnetic field, you can feel it. It can uh, say the core gets hot. That's a bad sign, etc., etc. But anyway, it's only a demo. And perhaps I'm going to use it. I'm not sure. Uh, say when you mount such a. Um, transformer in such a sensitive circuit with tubes here, two uh, pentode triode tubes with an extreme sensitivity on the grids, it could be that they pick up the hum out of this uh, plate transformer. Anyway, of course you can mount it far away from the sensitive tube circuit. That's very good idea. It's say the most cheap idea to make the tube amplifier work. Say use this as a kind of wall transformer. Make a separate unit, separate supply unit to supply the uh, filaments and the plate voltage, anode voltage, etc., etc. Completely apart from, say, the sensitive part of the tube amplifier. That's always a good idea. Though, of course, uh, we want to have some quality. That means that we, uh, in general, want a tube amplifier here, where all the transformers are mounted in the box, and we don't hear them. We don't hear noise, etc. etc. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is one ID. Here are two other transformers that can give out 24 volts. So with these transformers I can do the same trick. They have a higher quality. Uh, when I look at the cores, etc. etc. Perhaps there will be no, not so much more stray inductance with these transformers. I have to find it out anyway. Thanks for watching.